Well, Title 42 ends today because the public health emergency status for COVID also ends today in the here in the U.S. To help us understand the health care side of that, I'm joined by our medical expert, Dr. David Winter from Baylor Scott and Way Health. Now, Dr. Winter, does this mean that COVID is no longer a health threat in this country? No, no, no. There's still plenty of COVID out there. Thankfully, and fortunately, most of those cases are mild right now. No, the termination of the Public Health Emergency Act means that the federal government will no longer subsidize COVID testing, COVID medications, and COVID vaccines. They also don't, will not require laboratories to send the results of COVID tests, so we're going to have less tracking and more expensive vaccines, testing, and medications for COVID. Tashara. Okay, what about those COVID vaccines? Are those still being recommended? Yeah, the, federal, the FDA is saying right now that if you are old and frail or if you have some medical condition that might weaken your immune system, you ought to consider getting another booster after four months. Now, the rest of it looks like it's probably going to be about once a year, but that still remains to be seen. More to come on that later. Okay. We talked about this last week just a bit, the World Health Organization declaring an end to the global COVID emergency. Well, since folks are about to travel for summer, what will that mean for them? Yeah, I think they need to understand that the World Health Organization is now removing funding for some of the poorer countries that they use to help monitor and some treat the COVID. Also, they're going to have less collaboration, so less information we're going to know. So be cautious when you travel. Uh, you might check with your travel agents, uh, track with the CDC. They, can, they track these cases, at least they, they were right now. But it's going to decrease our awareness and our ability to track where COVID is out there in the world. I will say, Dr. Winter, you know, without revealing any names or anything, I've, I've, I know several people that are dealing with COVID right now, and uh, they actually managed to avoid it during the pandemic. So uh, what are some other tips for folks who do find themselves wanting to travel or get out and about a little bit more? Yeah, I would first check with the CDC. Look, CDC travel, you can look it up on the web, and they'll tell you per country what's going on out there, not only with COVID, but other infections, other vaccines that you might need. Um, right now, it's, it's, we're getting back to traveling, and you just need to be aware that there's a lot of diseases out there. Masking can have some effect. You don't have to wear a mask everywhere, but be careful in crowded areas, particularly in some of the poorer countries. Mm -hmm. The U.S. Preventative Task Force, as we switch gears, gears here, is changing their recommendation on breast cancer screening for, with mammograms. They now recommend those screenings start at age 40. Mm -hmm. Why that change? The reason is because we're seeing more breast cancer in young women. Now, we're not sure why that's happening, but it's very clear that if we find breast cancer early, it has a high chance of a cure. If we find it late, late-stage breast cancer is often deadly. So getting mammograms early is important. How frequently you get those is still under debate. The U.S. Preventive Services says every other year, starting at age 40. American Cancer Society says, no, no, get one every year. Some debate about that and some reason you might want to discuss that with your physician. Okay. Parkinson's disease is something you and I have talked about before as well. It has a new treatment strategy, boxing. <laughs> How does that work? Yeah, well, first, you're not being boxing with somebody else, okay? You're not going to get punched in the face. This is <laughs> boxing with a punching bag. And we know that Parkinson's has stiff muscles, a tremor, loss, loss of balance, and that kind of boxing activity tends to decrease that. Several studies have shown that. I know people who don't have Parkinson's, they still think that that's a good idea to get that kind of exercise. I don't like getting punched in the face, so I might try a punching bag, but I don't know about boxing as an exercise. I, I don't want to get punched in the face, Tashara. <laughs> Neither do I, Dr. Winter. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Always appreciate your insight. Thank you, Tashara. Have a good weekend. You too. Let me